a wise father tries to interest his sons in the world around them. Clothes are something they should learn about, for clothes are an important part of man's equipment. Dad knows how much it costs to keep a boy in clothes. He knows too how careless boys are about their clothing. Most of them seem to think that pants grow on trees. The fact is that trousers are among our most precious possessions. They contribute to our comfort and our pride. Think how uncomfortable you'd be without them. To protect their legs from arrows, the old fighting yeoman used to wrap strips of cloth in a crisscross motion around their legs. A knight might wear armor made of chain mail. Styles in trousers changed many times through the centuries. If a knight didn't think chain mail would protect him sufficiently, he could try a suit made of overlapping metal plates, sort of steel pants. Look at this dandy with his stripes and pleats. They wore gay colors, these old time chaps, and the materials were velvet, wool, silk, and satin. Even elderly courtiers wore short breeches and bright colors. Then trousers became long and very, very tight. These old trousers were undoubtedly elegant, but these modern trousers are certainly much more comfortable and still they look smart and trim. For many years, trousers were made to individual measurements by master tailors. All over the world, fine trousers are still being made in the same way today. Craftsmen like this tailor have many years of experience and acquire great skill. It takes long hours of careful work to create a single pair of tailor-made trousers. No wonder they're such expensive garments. Every stitch of sewing for many thousands of years was done by hand. But in 1845, Elias Howe applied for a patent on the very first sewing machine. What a crude affair it looks to us now. Only a hundred years have passed since Howe's bold attempt to lighten the work of millions of sewing women. But look at the streamlined efficiency of this recent model. Everyone should be interested to see what such a machine as this can do. We should know too something of the mass production methods made possible by such machines. Methods which have revolutionized all industry. Dad determines the boys must learn something of modern industry and decides to begin by showing them how the stamina factory is making trousers. An ideal of service lay behind the establishment of stamina by a young Australian. He realized the importance to every man of well-fitting clothes of good quality, and he decided to make trousers of the best material he could buy. He also determined to make them so cheaply that any man in Australia could afford to purchase them. But our young Australian refused to sacrifice either comfort, style, or quality. Only by mass production methods could it be done. The first thing was to select the cloth, and they wanted the best material they could find. They selected Crusader cloth, made in Australia's own mills. The cloth is laid out on a long table. Usually, 110 lengths of material are stacked in what is called one lay, L-A-Y lay. The folds of the cloth are split with a sharp knife. And it is sharp too. The pattern is carefully chalked. 440 pairs of trousers can be cut from this one lay, 110 pairs at a time. The patent cutter begins its work. This razor-sharp blade moves up and down at the rate of 1,500 times per minute. Just listen to it. 
It is easier to cut out 110 pairs of trousers at one time with this blade than it would be to cut out one pair with scissors. After the trousers are cut, the various pieces are sorted. Legs, pockets, straps, belts, flies and linings are laid out. And then, tied up in bundles of 40 pairs, ready to go to the sewing room. The factory is a cheerful place. The girls move about freely. They enjoy morning tea in the factory canteen and lunch usually in merry groups of four or five girls. They sing and chatter all day long. With this freedom, they accomplish an amazing amount of excellent work. The forewoman in charge marks the pieces according to size and lays them out ready to be sewn. She teaches new girls, checks work being done, and keeps everyone occupied and happy. Each girl is taught every step in the making of a first-class pair of trousers. She knows the work must be right. Inspection is critical from the first stitch until the trousers are finished and sent away. Style and comfort depend on the cut of trousers. The foreman has had 30 years experience and drafts all patterns for stamina trousers. He thinks nothing of cutting trousers for a man 60 inches, that's five feet around the waist. He also finds time to keep an eye on the work being done. As in all forms of mass production, one step follows another in regular order to prevent bottlenecks. The first sewing on stamina trousers is surging. This is an overlocking stitch, something like buttonholing. This is done so that no matter how many times the trousers are sent to the cleaners, the edge of the material will not fray. The next operation is making the fly. Everything must be neatly stitched. Now the buttonholes are made. See how easy it is for this machine to make neat buttonholes? Watch this slow motion shot. See how the machine shapes, stitches, and then cuts the buttonhole, all in a single operation. Pockets come next. With four threads, this machine stitches and overlocks the pocket in one swift motion, trimming the edge as it goes. Notice the pocket is rounded at the bottom no corners to wear out. It's stitched all the way round, no end threads to come undone. This steam electric machine presses all straps into identical shape to fit the non-slip buckles. It would be slow and difficult work to press these straps as perfectly as this with an ordinary flat iron.
The side straps are stitched by a machine which has a special foot to guide the narrow seam. The buckles are made of solid brass, chromium plated to resist many cleanings, and are firmly attached by this machine, which stitches back and forth. You couldn't pull this buckle off the strap. The straps are joined to the waistband to give a perfect fit. Stamina form-fitting trousers do not need braces, elastic, or even a belt. The fronts of the trousers are made in three operations. Cleats are made first and the fob pocket set in. Side pockets are put in next. See how neatly they're stitched. The fly is packed. Begins to look like a pair of trousers now. The band is sewn to the top of the trousers and the extension band is made. The important hip pocket comes next, and it's a good roomy one. The patent machine uses a special linen thread and a chain stitch overlock so that the back seam will give slightly when the wearer bends over. See how it stretches? That's a special quality feature of stamina. The waistband is stitched through and the side strap strengthened. The trousers are reinforced in this manner wherever extra strain may come. There isn't room to show all the small operations, such for instance as putting in linings, stitching side seams and so forth, but they're all done carefully. The seams are now carefully pressed. At this point, the trousers are inspected and the flies marked for buttons. Each girl who handles the material actually does a bit of inspection and the tiniest mistake anywhere along the way is enough to send the garment back for correction. The trousers go now to a patent machine which bar tacks, that means reinforcing, the end of each pocket. As with the buckle attaching machine, this action shows the needle moving first to one side and then the other, making a smooth bar of thread. Put your hands in your pockets as much as you like. This bar will keep them from tearing. The strongest thread obtainable is used to sew on buttons.
Look at the clever way the needle goes into each one of the four holes. Never misses. It's almost human. Hemming the cuffs of the trousers is done by machine. Look carefully and see if you can see any stitches. Look closer. No, not a stitch comes through. When trouser cuffs are stitched along the seam, the thread is often cut, so the cuffs of stamina trousers are always stitched crossways. The top of the trousers and the extension band give the clever buttonhole machine another job. The only hand sewing on the whole pair of trousers is fastening on the top button with start thread so that the stitches will not show on the outside. Day in, day out, year in, year out, these women take pride in fastening on buttons so they won't come off. They've sewn on hundreds of thousands of buttons. They also mark carefully the position for the two buttons on the extension band. Nothing is left to guesswork. The buttons go on the extension band. The sewing is finished. The trousers are now ready for a final pressing. Pressing is all done by men. The top part of the trousers is pressed firmly. This man gets plenty of exercise at his work. He does a sort of dance on the various levers, and he does it all day long. Pressing is essential to give that smart look. The most fastidious man would approve this crease. Now the trousers go to the checking table for a final inspection. They've been so carefully made that few pairs ever go back for correction. At last, the trousers are finished and checked. They are moved to the dispatch section to be sent out for shipment all over Australia. A man may be tall and thin or short and fat. There'll be a pair of trousers to fit him. Hmm, just a bit too large. This pair must have been made for that man who is five feet around the middle. Well, it's been fun watching stamina trousers being made. We had no idea so many people and machines and so much planning were required to make a single pair of trousers, to make them carefully and yet cheaply too. To see an ideal of service realized is important to us. The boys won't forget this experience, and neither will we. And maybe, just maybe, we'll all be more careful of our clothes after this.